All right guys, part B of the diodes and bridge rectifier lab. So this next one we're gonna do is we're gonna create a positive negative power source. You can see that we've got the positive line one going up to feed these guys. We've got the negative line two of the power source feeding this portion. And then we have the center tap coming in here and then feeding the junction between these two resistors. Okay, again, we have two one kilo ohm resistors and we have four diodes that are using to create that bridge rectifier. So that circuit is set up here. You can use your jumper cables or you can use these guys to jumper them all out. So we've got the power coming into the top here. That brings positive voltage to all these guys. Negative voltage on the bottom here, right? So that's coming off of line one and line two. And then here you can see at the center tap right here is going between the two resistors. Okay, first thing we need to do is once we've got this guy set up, then we've got to do a quick schematic. I threw in the voltages that I expected to see. So I was expecting 20 volts DC across uh, either side of the resistors. And then if it's a source voltage of 20 volts, then it should have 10 volts across each of those resistors because they are equal values. Okay, next one. Going down, we're gonna put the alligator clip of the scope on the center tap of the source. Okay, and sketch the output waveform that you see on the scope. So I got two milliseconds, five volts per division, and times one for my probe setting. And it looks like, again, we're getting the full wave output there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the scope here. Okay, we're gonna go across uh, the first one. We're gonna have um, the alligator clip on our center tap here, and then we're going to go across one side of our resistor here. Okay, so at that point we've got our waveform coming out, and you can see that there's the positive waveform of our positive negative output. Okay, again, I've got the alligator clip on the center tap, and I've got my positive referencing my positive of the circuit. And there you can see that the bridge output there. Okay, so we're gonna draw that out on our lab there. At this point, I'm at two milliseconds, five volts per division and times one. And I've thrown in the five, 10 and 15 on the side there in order to reference those guys later on to look at my voltages. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at uh, the other resistor. So we're gonna keep the, the alligator clip on the center tap and we're gonna reference the negative so again, alligator clips in the same spot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over and we're going to reference the negative here. And you can see here that that's the exact same waveform, but in the negative output. So still a bridge output. But you can see that the output is flipped there. Okay, so this was our positive side. So we can get a positive voltage out of the circuit or we can get a negative voltage out of the circuit. Excellent, okay. Both peak voltages are the same. So drawing this in again, two milliseconds, five volts per division, and probe setting is on times one. So you can see here that if I got five, volt per, five volts per division, I got five, 10, 15, just over 15 volts for my peak voltage there. Okay, now that's reduced because remember that we're looking at two resistors that are going across that source voltage now. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, our individual voltages. Now, each of these voltages should be the same value, right? Because they're the same resistance value. So we should have 20 volts, or I'm expecting 20 volts on either side of those two resistors. So each resistor should have about 10 volts DC. So what we'll do is uh, we're on DC voltage here. And we're now going to look at, let's get the scope out of here. Okay, we're going to look at the positive voltage first. Okay, so we're looking at our positive reference versus the center tap, and we're seeing a voltage of 10.2 volts. Okay, the 
the previous time that I did this I found 10.3 volts. Okay, that's our positive voltage. Where we're going from the center tap, so keep that center tap connected now. Okay, we're going to go over here to the other resistor and we should see the exact same voltage but with a negative polarity. So there's our 10.3 volts coming out on that second resistor. So identical resistance values because if we look at our total voltage across both of the resistors here should be about 20 volts. Okay, so we're going right across the resistors now and you can see that we have 20 volts across there giving us 10 on each of our resistors. Okay, so our calculation here we got uh, our V peak of 32.94 that we found before on the previous part of the lab minus our two diodes. We lose 0.7 volts or about 0.7 volts on each of those diodes. So 32.94 minus 1.4 for the diodes times 0.636 gives us that 20 volts that we just saw on the voltmeter. Okay. Each of those resistors will drop half that voltage, so 10 and 10. Does it compare with the meter reading within 10%? Yes. Okay. Last thing we're going to do is looking at the, the diode. Right. You can see that the bar there is the cathode. The other side without that bar is the anode. And the symbol for that shows you that this is your cathode and this is your anode. The anode is supposed to have the positive voltage and the cathode is supposed to have the negative voltage in order for the diode to conduct. So last thing we want to do is we're going to basically close everything down and then we're just going to grab one of the diodes. So we'll just grab one of these guys here. Okay, so we'll grab this guy right here. Again, we're just looking at the... Just focus it in here. Okay, so this is a, a different diode. Let's grab, where's the one that we were using? Sorry, guys. There we go. So there's our 1N4007 that we were looking at before. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the, the meter, and it says power off your, uh, your circuit, return all the components to the appropriate place, and then connect the positive lead of the, of the multimeter to the anode and the negative to the cathode. Switch the meter to the diode range and test one of the diodes from the bridge rectifier circuit. Okay, so we need, let's see, positive to the anode and negative to the cathode. Well, that was gonna forward bias our circuit now. Let's turn off our scope here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this button right here. Okay, that's for the diode setting. Okay, now you can see that it's doing continuity right now. So in order to get that blue diode setting, I need to hit shift and then this. And now I'm on to the diode setting. You can see there that I'm now set on the diode setting. Okay. Otherwise, right, we're on continuity and it's just going to see us giving continuity. So shift diode. Now we're on the diode setting. We're going to put positive to the anode. Okay. So let's just set this guy up. <clears throat> okay. So we got Positive to the anode. The anode is this guy right here. Give me two seconds. I only have one hand here. Okay, so we've got positive to the anode. Okay, so we're just connecting it up on the back there. And then we'll take the negative from, sorry, negative from our, uh, our meter here. Okay, and we'll just connect that up to the cathode here. Two seconds. Beauty. Okay, so we're going to the cathode. We're putting the negative there. Okay, so we've now forward biased that diode, positive to the anode, negative to the cathode. Okay, and then you can see that the voltage that we're getting is 0.5 volts. Okay, so what is that? That's the voltage drop across the diode while it's forward biased. We've put positive to the anode, negative to the cathode. This diode is conducting right now, and we're seeing that 0.53 volts drop across there. So it's supposed to be about 0.7, but again, that varies. Okay, so what happens if we now change the polarity? Okay, so instead of having the positive on the anode, what we'll do is we'll put 
the positive to the cathode here. Okay, give me two seconds just to set this up here. There we go, positive to the cathode. Okay, we're going to get negative to the anode. Okay, so we've now reverse biased that diode. And again, if this is a diode and we have reverse biased it and we've put the, the wrong polarity to that, so you can see that we have negative to the anode and positive to the cathode. That guy's not supposed to conduct. Well, there we go. We have open line here. Right? So at that point, the diode is not conducting. So it's a quick and easy way that you can test out your diodes. In forward biased, we're supposed to see that 0.5 to 0.7 volt drop, and it should be conducting. Okay? And at this point, we have a reverse biased, and we're seeing an open line, meaning that it's not conducting anymore. So here we can drop in those two voltages to finish off the lab. 0.53 volts is the voltage drop across the forward bias diode, and the OL is corresponding to an open circuit.